You're tuned in to Positively Terrible. I'm producer Dan, and each week my buddy Scott and I discuss surviving and thriving after trauma. It's a journey that started when Scott, his wife's fiance, and her boyfriend all walked into a bar. This week's decent human being is Angelie. She's got a messed up story about getting laid off. Settle in, my terrible listeners. Today's episode is going to be Positively Terrible. Hey, Scott. Dan, what's going on, man? Oh, well, that's my second run through the intro because I screwed it up the first time and I forgot to hit start. But now we're recording and I feel real good about everything. So, uh, All right. Well, I, can we start over? I, I think you've made some. Uh, never mind. Never mind. We, we've got to get going. Um, yeah, you made it through the second time and it was pretty awesome. I, we, we probably talk a little too much about how you do in the intro, but it's one of the most <laughs> fascinating things. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's the favorite part of our, our guests being here their favorite part is not just watch listening to you read but uh watching you do it too you're, you're quite the the professional uh, you like to see my hands move when i talk I, I like to see your hands move i just everything dan uh you're wonderful at it and angeli <laughs> what do you think uh is, is 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 that are you impressed already i am i am dan you did an amazing <laughs> job all Thank right. you so much. I really like the way we're really building me up this time, guys. Yeah, Dan, you're an amazing guy. Uh, I, I'm going to record uh, an episode dedicated just to all of your talent someday. But that is not what we're here for today. No. Today we're here to talk about Anjali uh, getting laid off after building up a career. And before I say anything to you, Anjali, what I'm going to say is this is very timely for me. I'm leaving my job. It was just announced at work uh, this week so I can talk about it. And I'm going to, I've built my career up over 18 years, worked my way into management and uh, just kind of decided I've hit the end of the road here and am going to pursue other adventures. And it's a weird and scary time. Um, Mm. But we're not here to talk about that either. We're here to talk about you. So, Angelique, can you tell us a little bit about your career? You, um, I believe it was healthcare that you were working in. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, how'd yeah. You, how'd so you get into I've that? been in healthcare. Yeah. yeah, it's actually um through my my mom and my family. I have a family of healthcare practitioners. I have my mom's been a nurse all of her life. Same thing with my aunt, and I have several uncles. Same thing, and so I was kind of steered in that direction, if you will. Um, and so that's how I got into healthcare. I was in healthcare for over twenty years. I started on the clinical side. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started as a scrub tech. I don't know if you guys know what that is. They're the people in surgery who hand the surgeons instruments. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've seen yeah. them on TV before. Yeah, yeah. Probably on scrubs or something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so I did that for, for a while and then I got tired of you know, uh, wearing a mask all day and being in a cold OR and ORs never seeing anybody really while cold. they were awake. They are, yeah, yeah. They keep them like around fifty or below. So, yeah. Uh, is is that is there a reason for that? I'm sorry, but it's probably not important to uh, this conversation. Yeah, no. But I assume there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, no. Everybody always people are always curious about that. But yeah, they keep it that uh, cold uh, to prevent uh, like germs okay. and um, infections. Okay, yeah, but yeah, too cold yeah. for but organisms anyway. to reproduce. Typically, <laughs> exactly. All right. Good to know. So, so yeah. So I did that for a number of years, and then I decided to hop onto the administrative side, and you know, started at an entry level position and made my way up to the management ranks, and um, you know, got into to. We've discussed this, Scott, that you know, I I actually am today. I'm a leadership coach, and I work with managers who are struggling because that's a you know really difficult uh, transition to make. Mm-hmm. And you you've been in management, so I'm sure you know. Oh yeah. Um. And then, yeah, about, I want to say it was my fourth or fifth year as a manager. Um, I was with a company that, um, you know, had just emerged with another company and because of financial um, stresses and, you know, just one day walked into the office, thought it was a normal, typical work day. And then I get called into my boss's office 
Um, and you know, the, the meeting said check in. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting, <laughs> oh, she's just going to check in, see how things are going. And, and, uh, yeah, before I know it, she, she tells me that they're laying me off and hands me little, my little pink slip in a couple boxes mm -hmm. to empty out my office. And, shoot me on my way so so that's how that happened yeah and it's an experience that a lot of people have gone through it doesn't make it any easier to know that a lot of people have gone through it at least not in that moment but right i want to take it back a little bit and just ask like was management something that you aspired to go into was that always kind of the plan or or was it something that just kind of happened yeah, it was definitely something that just kind of happened. And I think that's how a lot of managers end up being managers. It's, it's, they, it's probably you know, good for your business that that's how people end up managers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah, I mean, you know, I was, you know, doing really well in my different positions. I mean, I would probably get bored with a position every one or two years just because, you know, I'm a type A personality. I'm an overachiever. I'm really ambitious. So, um you know, I did I did move up the ladder, the career ladder pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but it was never my intention to end up in the management okay. ranks. It's just, you know, you get called into your boss's office and they say, hey, you know, you're doing a great job and we have this position opening up uh, and we wanted to know if you'd be interested. And, um, you know, at that time, again, me being ambitious and an overachiever, I went ahead and, um, you know, decided to give it a shot. And I actually went back to school um, to get my four-year degree in healthcare and man management administration. Okay. Um, but yeah, it definitely wasn't something that I was aspiring to. And I, and you know, talking to other people who have become managers, a majority of them is the same thing. Yeah. You know, they oh. were kind of singled out as you're, you know, you, you have great job performance, you're a team player, let's try you as a manager. And then they get into a management position. And it's like, whoa, this is not what I expected. <laughs> Yeah and, oh, yeah, and and it's going to be hard for me not to not put on my director hat during this conversation because <laughs> I see I see this all the time and it makes mm -hmm. me wonder like in this situation before you were presented with this opportunity had your manager ever talked to you about is this the direction you want to go was there ever career path conversations or or was it just hey, we've got this opportunity for you and setting it up like this is the best thing ever. You're going to, because I know a lot of times that that's how it happens. It's like, oh, hey, Dan, you want to be manager? This is going to be great for you. And Dan may never have wanted to manage people. So what were your feelings at that point? Was that, was that kind of the next step that you were ready for or it was presented to you? It sounds like it was more of the, being presented to you. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely more presented to me. And then I took it as, okay, let me prepare myself for this next step okay. by going back to school. Oh, okay. Um, But I mean, but I mean, I, I definitely feel like, um, you know, and that's kind of one of the, the things my soapbox talks that I talk about um, with working with managers in the workplace is that, you know, most of them are promoted because they're seen by you know their boss or the hiring manager is again being a good performer mm -hmm. in the current job that they're doing they're a good team player but um that doesn't necessarily yeah. you know correlate into being able to lead it's not the because same it's skill a whole set. different skill set yeah, I'm exactly sorry. <laughs> it's a whole different skill set no 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 please it's a whole different skill set like you said it's a whole different approach and a perspective mm -hmm. and um yeah and and they never prepare you for that Nobody ever told me that. Other managers that I talked to, like, yeah, you know, crickets, blind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody told me. And, and, and you know, I, as a manager, as a director, one thing that I'd like the world to know uh, is a little bit, we, t we talked about it, the, the Peter principle, getting promoted to the level of your mm -hmm. own incompetence. You're good. You're great at a job. So what do you do? You get promoted. You're great at that job. What happens? You get promoted. You're not so great at that job. So you stay there and then you end up with exactly. people in the wrong positions for their skill set. And it's kind of exactly. messed up the way. And, and the reason I say I wish everyone could hear this is because I very strongly believe in creating kind of your own career path and working on your man with your managers on what that is. And it's such mm -hmm. a rare thing to happen in the, in the workforce today. 
Exactly. Exactly. I totally agree on that. And, you know, I don't know if we, we talked about this before, but when you have people in these positions of authority that, you know, aren't quite ready for them yet, I mean, that's when you get all kinds of problems. You know, that's when we get unhealthy work environments, mm-hmm. toxic work environments. And, um, you know, they don't know how to, to handle uh, managing different personalities, uh, making good decisions that aren't based on, you know, emotions or <laughs> trying to be liked instead of doing the right thing. So, you know, that's where, where you know, things, um, it's really at the detriment of a company to have somebody who is not effective in a position like that because, you know, it's it's costing the company all kinds of stuff like high turnover rates, um, lost revenue. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, I can just go on and on and on. Yeah, and I could too, Angeline, and I'm not going to let either of us do that uh, because <laughs> this is not a business podcast, but I love talking about this type of stuff. Um, so let, let's kind of <laughs> get back to, to your career track. So you got... Uh, went back to school, became manager, all of that fun stuff. And one day mm-hmm. you're called to a check-in. Exactly. And you yeah, walk in. called into a check-in. Who, who was in the room when you walked in? Or was it a was it a, over like, uh, was it in person or was it over Zoom or something? No, 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 no. I mean, she she at least had the decency to, to do it in person. Okay, okay. Well, so yeah, I, I, I walked into her office mm-hmm. and it was her. And then it was also... um another manager uh, that I worked very close with, closely with mm-hmm. who was in there as well. And so I did, I, at first, when I walked in there and I saw him in there as well, I did think of that was kind of odd okay. that, you know, I thought this was kind of a check-in and there's somebody else in the room. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just decided to go with it. Maybe, you know, there was a dual project or something that she wanted to talk to talk about or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Well, it, so it wasn't HR. It was just another manager. That was in yes. the room. Okay. That, yes. Uh, unusual to me, yeah. but I know healthcare is a lot different than, uh, I was going to say the corporate world, but I guess healthcare is pretty corporate these days too. Um, well, yeah, now that you mention it, that is kind of odd. Um, but, you know, again, we were, the company had just gone through a merger okay. and we were going through some difficult, uh, you know, organizational and financial stuff. So, okay. um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, right. not that you mentioned that. That is kind of odd. So what did they say to you? So she basically said that because uh, this new structure that we had gotten in with our company, we went from, um, you know, the doctors kind of being employees to the doctors being owners. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she's she sat me down and she's just said, you know, the you know, sorry to tell you this, but the doctors have decided to let you go. Um, and, you know, that was that was pretty much it. She, you know, was very apologetic, mm-hmm. um, wanted me to stay in touch let let her know where I landed next and like I said handed me paperwork and yeah. uh a couple of empty boxes and yeah. there you go it sounds and and it 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 always is going to sound this way no matter how much empathy someone may have but it sounds cold right yeah You're... yeah it, and I think it definitely is I mean um you know I have, I mentioned this before that I have actually been on both sides yeah. of a layoff. Yeah. I've been the one doing the laying off as well as receiving. And, you know, until that happened to me, I didn't realize just how traumatizing mm-hmm. it can be for a person. So it, it, it was very eye open. I mean, you know, of course you don't want it to happen. Really think about, you know, when I'm on the other side of that chair, you know, to be more empathetic mm-hmm. and understanding and compassionate. And, um, you know, definitely I, I started in my future positions, I started to really fight for my team members. You know, whenever um, the higher ups were talking about reorganization or or we have too many people on this side or something, I really um, I became this 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 mama bear of my people <laughs> uh, and started to, to fight for him because, you know, um, again, having that experience, I know how devastating it can be. And, and um, you know, if there was any way that I could figure out how to keep somebody on when they were thinking of laying them off, I, I would totally do it. I, I would, you know, yeah. try and do these these jigsaw puzzles of, well, we could do this <laughs> over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And, and I, I, I'd expect nothing, oh, nothing less. Um, you seem like an empathetic and decent human being. So, but I want to go back to that day in the time like right after that happened mm-hmm. so 
what what were you thinking when when you're being talked at? Was it the was it literally like the first thing that you were told is the you know we're we're letting you go? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, yeah. That was the premise of the conversation. It lasted about five minutes. Yeah. So the next four and a half minutes, what are what are you thinking? Do you can you put yourself back in that position? Yeah, I totally can. I mean, I was completely shocked, mm-hmm. completely taken off guard. I mean, again, there was no um, indication that this was something that was going to happen. In fact, just three months prior, I had the most glowing annual mm-hmm. review I had ever had in my career. I had, um, you know, on the scale of one to five, how they score you. I, I scored um, fives on all but two categories um, and told that I was an asset to the company and all, okay. all these other, you know, positive feedback things. So, so yeah, it definitely caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it at all. I mean, again, I knew that the company wasn't doing very well, mm-hmm. but I didn't think that it had come to a point to where they were going to start laying off managers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was definitely shocked, devastated. I mean, the, the, th- the word that came out of my mouth when she said that, I was like, wow, oh, my gosh, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it sounds like things... You were almost, how do I, how do I say this? And, and especially how do I say it without putting words in your mouth? Because I am really good at putting words in other people's mouths. Um, things were going very well, it sounds like. You mm-hmm. had a career, which, which is something a lot of people don't have, right? Just right. fast growth, fast advancement. Mm-hmm. Went back to school and everything, you know, dedicated to it. Were you kind of wrapped up in your identity what i mean was was your career kind of wrapped up in your identity i mean yes yes you you hit the nail right on the head there i mean again with my being a type a and an overachiever i i was very career focused mm-hmm. you know i i made i mean when i after i got laid off and i'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit mm-hmm. but i started i went into an identity crisis because like you're saying i my identity was my job title yeah. and my job So when I got that ripped away from me, I all of a sudden was really lost and didn't know where I was. And I also, uh, you know, kind of looked up and realized that like 10 years had flown by Mm -hmm. because I had been so career focused and I lost touch with so many people that, you know, I had previously had relationships with. And I didn't realize that, you know, all of that had happened while I was kind of in this narrow field of you know, being successful in my career, continuing to climb up that ladder type thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And one of the emotions I'll say that that I struggle with at times is shame. And I'm wondering if, even though it's the company not doing well, did you feel shame? To And, and did you feel it all over again every time you had to tell someone to? Well, yeah, I definitely felt shame. And, um, you know, that was one of the things that really surprised me. And then also working with other people, talking to other people who had been laid off too. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of why it's so taboo is that there is this component of shame, even though most of the time when you're getting laid off, it is not because of something you did. It's yeah. because of, you know, a choice made by somebody else or because your company isn't doing well. But yeah, there there is this component of feeling shame um, that that happened to you. And then, yeah, it's definitely hard to tell other people. Um, it took me years before I was comfortable saying, oh, yeah, I got laid off. Yeah. You know, before yeah. I would, you know, try and come up with different wordings, you know, mm-hmm. or, or say, you know, something else happened. Um, just because, again, there's a lot of shame around it. Mm-hmm. And it, it was uncomfortable to talk about. That day, that night, did did you, how did you process it? I mean, I know there was an age when I would have gone out and gotten drunk. I know that there's been an age where I would have probably gone to bed and slept 18 hours. Um, We all process things in different ways. So, so what, what did you do in that, that like that day when you logged off left, what did you do? Yeah. I mean, I kind of went through a myriad of, you know, roller coaster emotions. I, you know, at first I was shocked. Then I was, you know, angry uh, then I felt betrayed. Um, then, of course, you know, uh, you know, lots of tears, lots of angry crying, sad crying, um, you know, crying out of frustration. Um, and then I, I spent a number of days kind of going through that. What was me? Mm-hmm. You know, why did this happen to me? Why me? 
you know, type of thing. And, and, um, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I went into a depression after that for several months. Yeah. Um, did you realize, you no, know, and my, my confidence, did you realize Actually, it? I didn't. Okay. No, no, I didn't. Not at first. I, I didn't realize it until hindsight when, um, you know, I kind of got out of that funk and then I kind of looked back in hindsight and said, Oh wow. You know, that I was, I was pretty depressed. My husband knew. Mm -hmm. And you know, he told me later, um, but, but yeah, I, I went into a depression during that time. And again, it, just seeing things in a different perspective, because how many, how many people get laid off that, you know, spend, you know, months in a depressed state mm -hmm. and, you know, people don't even realize it because again, most of the time when you're in that state, you either don't know, you don't realize it or you don't share, yeah. you know? So, so yeah. I find that I never know. I, I've actually told some of my friends some of the behaviors that they might see and there's mm -hmm. one specifically who i have asked her to tell me you know even if it's even if i'm not depressed i want her to say hey scott i'm seeing this behavior uh i know yeah. that sometimes that you, you do that when you're depressed and i promise to do the same for for her and i think mm -hmm. that's one of the hardest things is even recognizing how the hell are you even going to pull yourself out and pull yourself out. I don't know that I even like that term because it's not yeah. necessarily pulling yourself out, but it's really hard when you don't know just how low you are. And then you've got exactly. the, the inertia of just sitting around or whatever, however you're coping with depression. And it's a mm -hmm. terrible thing to, when you said that was about three months, did did you seek out therapy or were you already going to therapy or did you do something to, that that helped at that point? No, no, I was not. Um, I didn't go to therapy. I didn't seek it out or anything because, okay. again, it, it, I really didn't know yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's what was happening to me because, you know, I was just in this, like you're saying, super low state mm -hmm. for for months. And, um, and you're expected to now you know, find I, a new job, right? You're you're in exactly. that state. So how, how... Ex ex exactly. And I was going to talk about say say that when I started interviewing to get into um you know find another position, that's when I I really kind of started to get an idea that I wasn't you know, I would say my normal um because I just I bombed every interview and I must have done like twelve interviews or something and and it was like you know on paper. I, you know, it, it looked good, but I, I just didn't have the confidence yeah. that um, I needed to have to do well in those interviews to get another position. And I know that I've worked with other people who it's been the same thing that, you know, because of what happened to them, that they, they have the skills and the knowledge um, and they have great mm -hmm. worth, work ethic to be able to get another position. But because of just their, their lack of confidence and self-esteem mm -hmm. because of getting laid off, it, it takes them, you know, months and, and they end up, you know, needing to talk to somebody like me to help them. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. And how long did it take before you started, before you got that resume updated and started to try to put yourself out there? Yeah, so I intentionally took, because I got a three-month severance pay okay. um, when they let me go. So I, I, I um, intentionally took that three months to, to just... You know, kind of sit there and lick my wounds. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> and I think good for I, you. you know, was that the right decision, or do you think you might have come out of it sooner had you, you know, be, started doing applying and and everything? Or no, I, I definitely think that three months was a blessing because um, I, it gave me time to think about what my next steps were, mm -hmm. and instead of um, going back to being a manager, I actually pivoted and got into coaching. Um, that's how I got into to, to my coaching business and what I do today. Yeah. So, you know, um, ultimately getting laid off was, was a huge blessing. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, it, it definitely wasn't, I did not see it as that at the time. Yeah. Well, Angela, <laughs> so. what I will say is I've got so much to say given where I'm at and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Take some time. Uh, I'm very lucky to be at a point in my life where I can. And I'll, if I'm being completely honest, I've had long COVID. The listeners are sick about hearing about it. Other people are sick about hearing about it. But I haven't talked to you about it. So, um, And it's kind of destroyed. It, the, even that's destroyed like some of my confidence. It's like when I'm right. staring at a computer and can't even come up with the word to type, it's like, can I ever function at, can I be myself anymore? And mm -hmm. 
it's a terrible place to be. So you got to sit around and lick your wounds. And Mm -hmm. you said you bombed a a bunch of interviews. Um, I did. Mm -hmm. Was there any signs of like promise in these interviews or did you, were you just leaving them like what the hell just happened? What the? Exactly. No. Yeah, exactly. I was walking out of those rooms going, what was that? Yeah. 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 It, It, It was, it was bad for a while. Okay. And, and the thing is, is that, um, you know, the healthcare community, um, I mean, it's, it's large, but in terms of networking as a professional, it's pretty small. Mm. So, you know, I was burning bridges pretty fast. And I know that people were talking to people, um, you know, so I was like, oh, I have to get my shit together. Oh, you mean burning? There's my, there's my one swear word. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get my stuff together. Or, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to run out of opportunities. Yeah. When you say burning bridges, do you just mean by your performance in these interviews or was there something else going on? No, no, no. Just, yeah, my performance in these interviews. I mean, and then also people kind of, other people vouching for me, Mm -hmm. you know, saying, oh yeah, you should talk to, talk to Anjali. She's, she's an amazing manager. She'd be a great addition to your organization. And they kind of go in there and then totally suck and then they're like okay what was that and then going back to the person who referred me what are you talking about what did you just do to me right right well in the small world <laughs> of, of healthcare, the, it is their reputation at stake to some extent um exactly so, exactly God, that must have been hard I'm, I'm sorry you went through that so at what point did things start to turn around yeah so it actually started to turn around when i again you know like i mentioned earlier i i really went through an identity crisis Mm -hmm. um when that happened i definitely felt super lost um i didn't really know who i was i had wrapped up my my whole being into my job title of being a manager and and focusing on my career and so you know when you're at home for that long with nothing to do there's a lot of you know ruminating and stuff Mm -hmm. and and i really had to start focusing on um you know who who am i you know i really started to question did did i even want to go back to a job i mean i was going on these interviews because you know for income Mm -hmm. really um and it's what i i had done in the past um but i really started to look at you know, was I going to be happy going back to another management position? Was this something that I wanted uh, the path that I wanted to continue on? Or is there, you know, I had an opportunity to possibly go in a different direction. So um, I really started to do a line, lot of um, mindfulness work, mm-hmm. you know, journaling, meditating um, and things like that. And really trying to discover you know, who I was and what it is that I really wanted to do instead of feeling um, pressured to go a certain direction because of different, you know, different reasons, like feeling pressured to continue to be a manager because we needed the income or feeling pressured to go in a certain direction because that's what people expected of me or told me to do. Um, So really trying to um, create my own destiny, if you will, and take control of my life rather than feeling like I was getting pushed around mm. in places where I really didn't want to go. Yeah, Angeli, I'm, I'm, everything you're saying is resonating with me. So, uh, <laughs> sorry listeners, you you're very much have to hear too much Scott in this one, because I am looking at you and thinking of questions that are for my benefit. Hopefully other people are getting something out of it as well, but, but for my benefit. And, um, how did you know? I mean, I, I, that's a weird question, maybe, but I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to say I have an identity crisis. I, well, I'm, I am having an identity crisis, I, maybe, um, because I, there are is so much I love about managing. There really is, mm-hmm. and a lot of people right. don't have that passion. Right. It's it's definitely a calling. But there's the other side as well, and yes, it's hard and you you mentioned that you've been on both sides of layoffs like the, one of the hardest days of my life was laying people off because oh, of yeah. COVID oh yeah and mm-hmm. there was one two-person team and I had to lay off one of the people on that team and yeah. I called the other person afterwards because I wanted to speak with her I thought I owed her that mm-hmm. and I had to hang up because I started crying on the phone because oh yeah it was horrible yeah, it's yeah. So I do want listeners to know that that's pretty fucking traumatic too. 
yes, most it is. managers, it is. most leaders are not looking to lay people off. And, right. you know, I've been lucky that I have not had to do it more than once, but I don't, that's an experience. And, and then I feel guilty for feeling guilty or for, for feeling bad because I'm not the one losing my income. I'm not the one whose world was just kind of pulled out from underneath them. Mm-hmm. But I also took pride a little bit. You know, I, I had heard that there were other people who had the their managers the, do the work for them. And I thought, no, nah, this is my job. I'm, I'm, yeah. I am the director of this department. This is my job as much as it fucking mm-hmm. sucked. Um, but do you find in your coaching that a lot of people feel that they've got to continue on the path that they've always been on? Because that's, that's where I've been for a long time is I feel mm-hmm. like because I ended up in management and a lot of that was, you know, like you, it, I, I succeeded. Uh, there were expectations. I was a straight A student, you know, all of that stuff. And mm-hmm. I think people expected a lot out of me and I followed the path I thought I was supposed to follow. And I didn't know I could get off that path. It felt right. overwhelming. Is that one of the bigger challenges that the people you work with run into is I'm, I'm kind of stuck. I've got this job or this career and I don't know how to do anything about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, A majority of the people that I work with, um, they find that even if they came to me and they didn't know that um, ahead of time Mm -hmm. is, you know, when we start working together and like peeling, peeling the layers of the onion away, they, you know, find that, you know, gosh, maybe I I, I don't, you know, want to go this direction. I've had uh, managers that I've worked with end up going into, um, you know, doing different things. I had um, a, a gal who'd been a manager for a number of years decide to pivot and go into project management because mm-hmm. um, she like kind of like you um, and also me is there's parts of the job that you love and mm-hmm. she loved, um, you know, doing the the project type stuff, but she didn't like, you know, kind of dealing with the people stuff because that's that's hard as we're talking about, right. you know, especially when you have to deliver bad news. Um, so she, you know, decided to just focus on that and go into project management and she's she's doing extremely well. And I had another gentleman who was a director who came to me and his exact words were, I have this incredible career and life, but I'm so unhappy. Help me figure out why. <laughs> and, you know, we figured out that he just wasn't in alignment with what he was doing. And he ended up pivoting and going somewhere else, too. So, so yeah, that that's definitely, um, you know, something that I find in working with people that I work with. Okay. And I do want to go back a little bit to, the, to when you got laid off, because I, I meant to say it, and I think that, Perhaps I said it when we talked previously, but losing your job is, I mean, it's like any other loss. It's it's grief, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you were describing, you know, kind of going through a lot of stages of grief. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Did you, did you, despite being told the reason and having the glowing review, you said you lost your confidence. Did, did you blame yourself during that time? Yeah, I mean, I think I I definitely did. And again, um, just kind of like what you're pointing out is even though, you know, getting laid off, it's not t- necessarily your fault mm-hmm. or anything that you did or didn't do. Um, but it's 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 very personal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's hard to separate that that event from um, taking it personally when you know that that, that the reason was actually um, more of a, a separate reason than than it being about you. But you know, it's it's such a something that happens. It's so personal to to you that you can't help but um, you know feel like you did something um, that that caused this. And and you know that's when you go like you're saying through those grief stages and and feeling um, having that lack of confidence and self esteem and and having to you know kind of claw your way back out of that hole. Yeah. And do you remember the moment that you felt like you kind of got your direction back? I do. I do. I actually, um, well, first of all, it, I, it took several months for that to happen because um, I actually did decide to um, pursue coaching. Mm-hmm. And, and how I figured that out is, you know, I really started to figure out what parts of my job that I love. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I loved coaching and mentoring my staff and, and physicians. I, um, you know, it really warmed my heart when I could help someone achieve a goal um, and then watch them achieve that and celebrate with them. So um, that's when I decided to go to go the coaching route and um, use my expertise that I gained over the years that I've been in management and leadership and, and help other managers that I always saw struggling just like I had been mm -hmm. and seeing that, you know, uh, some of them didn't make it, you know, some of them quit after just a few years when I knew that they had the potential to be a great leader. Um, but anyway, I, that's, that's where I started to go into, um, I went to life coaching school. I went into a, a training that was a year long. Um, and in that experience, um, you know, I really had to, we were really forced to deep dive into becoming more self-aware. Um, because you know that in turn is how you help people that you coach mm -hmm. and so um, it, it was very enlightening but painful at the same time if that makes sense um, you know because learning learning about yourself is probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do well, and it's you know in it face value it it's like <laughs> you know learning about yourself what's the big <laughs> deal man it's, it's it's hard well I was just gonna say that it's also not something that we're taught to do. It, it's, exactly. it's kind of incredible of how important it is and how positive the changes of my life have been since I learned mm -hmm. about me. But I will really yes. say that the learning about me accelerated. Well, I thought it accelerated in my 30s until I got to my 40s and realized I was wrong about a lot of things and mm -hmm. had the help of a therapist as well. And mm -hmm. at that point, that's when I started to learn about me. And it's just not only, I mean, it's such a great tool to, to know, to recognize why you think or why you behave yeah. and set yourself up to be successful. Yes. And it's such an incredible thing. And it's not anything, if I was, if I was designing curriculums for students, that would be mm -hmm. something that I think should be all through, you know, from the time you're a kid, you should be learning about introspection and understanding yourself. And um, I just wish that these resources were more available to everyone as well. Exactly, exactly. I say that all the time. I mean, if these things were taught to us from, you know, childhood, uh, in our childhood school years, how different would our lives be, you know? Yeah. What, how would our lives have gone different? So, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you there. Um, but, yeah, I, I went through, you know, my journey of self-awareness and self-discovery. And, um, you know, I've since learned in my experience and, in, in, you know, starting my own business and, and uh, starting to travel around the world and be in different countries that it's, it's a process that you will continue to keep going through. So you'll keep repeating the same steps of the process in different situations. So it's, it's not like, you know, I've gone through this self-discovery journey. I'm really confident and I have this high self-esteem and I feel, you know, I'm, I'm perfect in, in this perfect place in my life. Um, that's not realistic. No. It's a continuous cycle of yeah. learning and developing. So, yeah. And when I said that I thought I knew myself in my 30s and I, then I learned I didn't in my 40s, some of that was my own evolution, right? There were things I mm -hmm. knew about myself and thought about myself. And I might not have been wrong, but things change. Right. And I'm not the same human I was that, that I was back exactly. then. Exactly. Um, yeah, we're, we're always growing and developing. Yeah, and I'll also say that from that perspective, learning about myself has been an eye-opening thing and it's allowed me to maybe be more myself right exactly because I think a lot of my life including my career I feel like was expectations what does what does success mm -hmm. look like and yes. for me you know I don't have I'm not I don't need to be starting businesses and going public with them or anything success to me is having my home having a career that type of stuff and exactly i just gave up my career and if it doesn't go right that could result in me giving up my home <laughs> 
but it's it's just such an interesting thing about knowing ourselves and in the work life and personal life being intertwined and i'm rambling um probably because i have so many more questions that again are for my own benefit and i'm not going to make my <laughs> my my listeners our listeners uh listen to all my questions um but if someone is thinking about career changes um what is your best advice? What What do you want to tell the people if, if they're not sure about what they want in their future, they want a career change, what would be your best piece of advice? Your, your best piece of free yeah. advice. Uh, they can pay you if yes. they want to go do the, the coaching. <laughs> but no, it's, it's basically what we have been talking about for the last few minutes is becoming self-aware, okay. figuring out what it is that you want to do, who you are, what it is that you want to do, who do you want to be? Um, because again, you, you mentioned it, that a lot of our life is expectation, you know, especially um, in, in our country, it's, you know, uh, living up to the Joneses, being like the Joneses, yeah. you know, our neighbors, um, and always comparing and competing. And, you know, that's not what it's supposed to be about. That's typically not who we truly are. And, you know, going through my self-discovery journey, I real I figured out that I was a complete stranger to myself. Yeah. And, you know, how many how many other people are out there who who might find themselves in the same same place? But, yeah, if you're contemplating a career change or you find yourself in a position where you've been laid off and you're trying to figure out what you want to do next, um, maybe you're not comfortable going back into the same um, function job function that you just came from. Get, get to know yourself, you know, figure out who you are, what your core values are, what makes you happy, what you want to do and what type of legacy you want to leave behind. Okay. Um, you know, so yeah, that's my, that's my free advice. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you one more question. That's good free advice. That it, it is. And I think that I came to some of those conclusions recently. Um, but and, and your answer might be exactly the same. This might not even be a good question, but that is what you want to do when you want to change a career. But what would you say would be the first thing that you'd tell someone to do when they unexpectedly lose their job? Yeah, um, same thing, but I would add to let yourself go through that grieving process. You know, it's, it's traumatizing. Mm -hmm. if you've been traumatized if you have lost your job. And it, and it wasn't your choice um, it is go through that grieving process. And and one of the things that was one of the, the things that helped me the most when I was going through that. And and I also find it uh, helpful for other people that I that I work with who have gotten laid off, too, is is, you know, again, go through the motions of your emotions. Mm -hmm. And one of those emotions it, that that was huge for me was anger because I felt betrayed by the people that I was working with who then decided to let me go. Um, and again, I started to journal. And one of the most liberating things that I did is I took a day to write a letter to the people who I was angry at, mm -hmm. who I felt betrayed me. And I, you know, they never saw that letter. I never mailed it to them. I didn't email it to them. It was more for me, for me to get out all of that emotion, a lot of it pent up emotion. I didn't even realize I, that I was, you know, holding in just to get it all out, get it off of my shoulders and um, just let it go. Because when you can let that go, I mean, you, you won't realize it at the time, but that uh, really deep emotion is holding you back from moving on. So when you let that go, you can move on to bigger and better things. And, you know, I wrote that letter to a few or letters to a few people and I actually ended up burning them um, as kind of, you know, a uh, uh, letting them go in that way. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it wasn't I had to do it more than once, um, you know, because, again, it's a lot of deep rooted emotion. But, yeah, the, I, I would add the same thing, um, you know, go through your, your self discovery process, figure out who you are, what you want to do. Um, but then I would add to process your emotions. And if you need to write letters and burn them, <laughs> you'll, you'll find that super helpful. Yeah, I love that. Don't burn the bridges. Burn the paper. No. Burn the letters. No. Exactly. Okay. Gr <laughs> great advice. I, I appreciate that. I think that a lot of people listening will appreciate it. And I shared with you when we first talked that I was a little bit 
worried, not worried, that's the wrong word, but when I saw the topic, losing a job, my first thought was, gosh, we've had stalking, we've had cancer, we've had, all, but in the end, it was like, wait, this is something a lot of people go through. I think, yeah. frankly, and, that's one of the most tra traumatic things that I have been through in my adult life. And, and probably yeah, one of yeah. the more... And again, we don't talk yeah. about it, right? It's like taboo to talk about. Yeah, and I was going to say... It's like, oh, you got laid off? No big deal. <laughs> probably... It is a right. big deal. Probably one of the more relatable things, too, because so many people have yeah. been through it. And Exactly. You lose so much more than a paycheck. You lose your community. Yes. You lose your identity. You, you lose a lot yes. of things. And... Mm -hmm. there's the grief and, and everything. So I, I think ultimately this is a very powerful topic and a very relevant topic. And I think we're, we're going to get a lot of value from it. So thank you so much, Anjali. I really appreciate you being here. You've, you've been a great guest. Um, is yeah. there anything else that you'd like to say, whether it's plug something, what's your websites, your socials, uh, tell us a good joke. I don't care. Just one last thing for our audience. <laughs> Yeah, one last thing for for the audience that I would say, I'm not going to plug anything that I'm doing. If you do want to check me out, it's www.oversightglobal.com. Okay. Um, and you can find all of my socials there and everything about my programs That'll there. That'll be in the but, show notes too. And, you know, I just... Yeah, we'll share it. Oh, awesome, awesome. But yeah, I just want to leave the audience with, um, again, self-awareness. It's, it's so important. It's something we're not taught, something we don't do, but it, 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 it changes your life. You know, figure out who you are, learn to like yourself, and most importantly, learn to love yourself. And that's what I'll leave with. Oh, man. What powerful words to end. My favorite. Thank you so much. Um, you've been amazing. And you passed the decent human being test. You're, you're, you're awesome, <laughs> Anjali. Uh, Dan, I, I, you know, I speak for Dan all the time because he's, he's the... Uh, silent type over there the, the, <laughs> the strong <laughs> silent one on the podcast exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly he, he, he's got he's got the looks i've got the voice so i do the talking <laughs> but dan and i are grateful um we're honored we're humbled i don't have enough words to tell you about the way that it makes me feel <laughs> when you uh are willing to share such an important and and traumatic experience with us so Thank yeah, you, thank so, you much. so much for having me and for providing this platform to do it. it, it it's you guys are great. Yeah, amazing. For work. sure, I, I great might be a strong word, but I we decent, try not decent. to suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys don't suck at all. You're you're way beyond suck. All right. <laughs> very kind of you. <laughs> all right, <laughs> this uh, you may not believe did this. not suck, and that's because of you. So thank you uh, so much for yes. that. And you guys oh, are you. so far from sucking or whatever you said might be the nicest things anyone's ever <laughs> said to me. So on that note, I can't say any more except this experience has been absolutely, positively terrible. I met you back at Tanaka's fest. I confess I was nervous and stressed because I thought you were the best. I was right.
Once I was nervous and stressed Because I thought you were the best I was right Positively Terrible is a part of the Terrible Podcast Network.